Hey what's up guys, I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Imperia Rome as we are playing as the Roman Republic. Alright, so before we get started in today's episode, one note on the historical lectures. We haven't had any just yet and I said we'd have one uh, around this episode, you know, sometime between episode 3 and 5. Well, we've been talking about the history of uh, uh, many different things as we've been playing, so that's one reason why I think we're going to move it back just a little bit because... I was thinking about doing a lecture over the Etruscans, uh, which I guess we still could do that next episode. The other option would be to just wait into the Punic Wars and then do a lecture over the, the, the Punic Wars and just talk about the you know the, the wars between Rome and Carthage. I think that would be a, a good choice of topic as well. So maybe that'll be next episode, maybe the one after that. Uh, depends on what which one we go with. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion whether you'd rather have do one over the Etruscans or rather have one over Carthage and and the wars with them. Uh, just let me know down in the comments below. And uh, depending on which one we do is uh, when we would do the, uh, when we would actually do it, which video. Uh, because the Etruscan one would probably have to be next episode, while the, the Carthage one we could wait, you know, an episode or two until we're ready to, to actually start fighting them. So we did start a war with these guys down here last episode. Now we're just waiting for our army to get down there. We can raise up our other army on the 25th, which again, I think will probably be a similar time of when these guys are uh, actually down here. Yeah, uh, it's going to be yep, exactly the time. Uh, so let's actually have these guys go down this way. Let's see how we want to do this. We'll go here. In this case, we want to battle them real quick. And we can now raise that other army. Uh, impatience is a virtue, so Publius has been becoming increasingly restless of late. He believes that his stature is deserving of a key role in our government. He has approached our Senate, insisting that we bestow a, such a role upon him. Indeed, given his prominence, perhaps we should consider this carefully. So let's just see if he's, he's good at anything. Not really. Alright, well, he's going to lose some loyalty, and if we, if we don't give him one, he'll continue to lose loyalty. And this event often just keeps on firing until you give him something. Is he the leader of a family? Nah, he's not even the leader of a family. He's not even a member of one of the families. Yeah, you know what? Screw this guy. I don't I don't care. <laughs> he can whine all, all he wants. Uh, and I was trying to look at the, the things we can do here. We had another event pop, uh, pop up here. Across the Adriatic. So for many years, for many long years, those in control of the Imperiote lands have interfered in the region they call Magna Graecia. Uh, that's here in southern Italy. Uh, now with our territory beginning to overlap with their sphere of influence, it has become all too apparent that there is only one solution. We, If we are ever to be free of the meddling, we must take to the sea and claim their land in order to protect the fair citizens of the so-called Magna Graecia, who wish only to lead a peaceful existence under our rule. Uh, so yeah, we'll gain the claims over here. And of course, this is all to represent the war between Rome and, and Epirus, or Epirus, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Uh, so, yeah, that that would be the the Pyrrhic, uh, the Pyrrhic Wars, and um, yeah, I, I don't know that we'll want to go over there right now. I think we'll probably finish up uh, all the conquests here in Italy, but we do have the uh, the claims there, so that helps uh, for whenever we do decide to go that route. Obviously, we got a lot of other stuff to do here first, though. Uh, we can raise up that army, uh, that last set of levies here, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, we don't really need these guys, but of course, the main reason why we're raising them is because he's a much better commander. So let's go ahead and bring him over here, and we'll just bring them all together for now. We want to split that army up, though. Yeah, we'll probably do that now as soon as I get here. So let's go ahead and start splitting them up, and let's kind of get know how many places we're going to have to siege. So let's just take a look real quick and see what their fortification situation is looking like. So we have a fort here that we have to deal with, and hmm, do they not have any forts? That's what it seems like. And it seems like they don't have any fortifications. And I don't think we've been, again, we haven't been brought into the conflict with them. So, yeah, this should be pretty easy. Even easier than I was initially anticipating. We really just have to take that location. So, yeah, let's go ahead and create a little army here to, to do that. And we'll just throw a bunch of uh, light infantry in there to do this, this roll. And I don't know how many we're going to send. Let's do, yeah, we'll do like 4,000. All right, so we want them to go over there now. And then we'll bring these guys on over to here. And yeah, they're not looking on uh, attacking these troops here. Yeah, obviously, you vastly outnumber them. They're not going to attack us there because we outnumber them as well. So we'll be able to start that siege up. And let me just take a look at the fleet here and see if they're ready. Not quite. We're going to let them get a little bit higher. 
And I'm waiting for these guys to get here so we'll have our commander. And then we'll move over here and, and uh, attack the enemy. So 18,000 troops. Let's go ahead and have them come over here and, and see if we can't get them to engage us. Uh, of course, we can just take them province by province as well since they don't have any forts. So if they don't engage us, then we'll just take all their, their territory. Uh, so we have an election upcoming. Uh, so we'll finally be getting rid of uh, Publius here, the insane uh, Publius, the lunatic. And he hasn't actually been a bad leader. I mean, the charisma and zeal is pretty high, but we have had those, those conflicts between him and Marcus. Him and Marcus have not gone along well. So hopefully our next two consuls work together a little better. All right, so it does seem that they f they fleed uh, south. They're not interested in fighting us. And they're in this other war as well, so it's going to distract them. Uh, I didn't take a look to see who our new consul was going to be, so we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Let's see what this event is about. Uh, consul Sorter. Did they change out already? No. Uh, Council Surter uh, offers friendship. We have received an envoy sent by this consul, ruler of this subject. He offers okay. So basically, we can get a boost in opinion, or we can instead get some popularity. Uh, so this is these guys here, which we do want to annex them soon. So yeah, let's uh, say this could be useful. That's a big op opinion boost, so high that if we just sent a gift here, then we could go ahead and start the annexation process now. Uh, we will have to wait until the 20th of September since we just sent an envoy there. So uh, wait a month and then we'll, we'll start the integration process. Uh, we're currently integrating these guys here. So that's not quite done yet. And we are over here. Let's go ahead and start pushing forward. And we'll just uh, take all their territory since they don't have any forts. And, of course, as I said, this guy's going to get more and more irritated. Uh, but he's just a minor character. I don't know why he thinks he can make demands of us. Apparently, uh, that is not enough men uh, that I sent there. So we are going to need to give them a few more. Yeah, I thought they had plenty. Uh, but, yeah, that was not the case. Uh, so let's go and send these guys over to there. And let me see here. We're going to have trouble. I have to deselect those guys. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take this province first. Uh, we could spread out and take them, I suppose. I'm really surprised they don't have a fort here. Yeah, it must have already been taken or something. Uh, and the election has happened. I never did take a look at what, uh, and that has resulted in us losing a bit of stability. But I never did look to see who was taking over. Uh, but it seems that they were both uh, tribunes. Okay, a military tribune and a tribune of the, the plebs. Interesting. Uh, so let's go and take a look at these two characters. Uh, so this is Gaius. He's the one that has a fantastic military raid. And yeah, look at his marshal. That's 12. Wow, that is nice because he's the one that's going to be commanding our, our troops. Um, though not these troops. These guys right here. So we no longer need to keep these 2,000 with him. Uh, so we won't. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to, to do that anymore. Uh, because he's nowhere near as good as our current uh, consul. So that's fantastic. So you actually have a, a martial uh, commander. That's going to be helpful for the conflict up here against the Etruscans. Uh, and he also has good ratings in, in other areas, too. He's, uh, you know, you know, decent at administration. He's charismatic as well. Uh, and then we have the proconsul, who's actually even better with the finesse. And uh, his zeal is not great, but apparently our zeal is even worse. Uh, so he's the one taking care of finesse and zeal while we're taking care of charisma and martial. All right, uh, so I think he was the Tribune of the Plebs. He's 70 years old. Our current character is 60. Just looking at our traits and how those might impact us, you can see them here. Looking at aggressive, uh, so we have light cab discipline increased. Uh, the prominence here it results in us getting more commerce in the capital, so that'll be helpful. Yeah, that's very nice. Uh, as far as other things impacting us, yeah, I don't think that's going to impact anything else. And then he's also devout, so we're gonna have increased omen power, and uh, invoking that decision there is gonna be a negative 10%. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, finish taking this here. And yeah, they canceled the military axis. Clearly they didn't need any more. I'm assuming they finished their war. Yeah, they finished their war with them. So now uh, these guys are just at war. Uh, Brudia here is just at war with us in our subjects so they can now concentrate fully on this conflict with us all right so we're gonna bring these guys over here uh, i think once we take that uh, capital there which again i don't think they have a fort here yeah so i think once we take this this province here it'll just result in all the provinces flipping over to us 
And so then we're just waiting on this siege, which sending our fleet over there would help. Uh, so let's go ahead and send those guys over there now. Those are just mercenaries. So we don't have to worry about them. Uh, but yeah, once we take that, we can now choose how we want to sack it. And we'll probably just be gentle again. As long as we're here in Italy, I think that's what we'll do. Because we don't yet have it, if we did the nun shall hide, then our, our consul would get the cruel trade. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to get the, the money, guys. Alright, so these guys will take this here. Again, I don't think it's it's necessary. You can see they're already flipping these provinces. Uh, so that one's already flipped. That one's flipped. They really just need to do this battle. And I don't think there's going to be any way to avoid attacking him in the hills. So we're just going to have to do it. They're trying to retreat here. So let's go ahead and see if we can't like catch them where they can't get out of there. And there was a battle in the sea. Uh, they had one ship apparently, so we did sink that one ship. I think that's the first naval battle we had outside of that time the pirates killed us real quick. And we were actually able to capture somebody, the Admiral there. Alright, so we get to deal with him as we see fit. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, we need to assign these positions, I never did that, uh, to replace the, uh, you know, the consuls, the current consuls. Uh, so let's go ahead and get those placed. I do want to take a look at our character situation. So the Claudii are the only one that's that's close to getting them content. So I might want to prioritize them uh, over some of the other family members. Uh, as far as our, our current consuls, uh, the co-consul is a member of the Fabii. Uh, wh who is uh, our current, our, our character? What family is he from? I'm not actually sure here. You know what? I don't think he's from uh, one of the families. I think he's a, a minor character. Yeah, he's a minor character. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, minor character was able to rise up to uh, be consul. That's uh, quite amazing. Alright, so, and certainly historical, it happened. Uh, so let's go and get the, it was, it was rare, uh, but it happened. Uh, so let's go and get the tribunes filled out. Uh, so we do have a member of the Claudii here. He's not quite as good as this guy. Uh, he is 80 years old, so we'll be able to replace him soon. Yeah, I guess we'll put him in place. He's got very good loyalty, so that's important. But let me just double check to see if there's not another Claudii over here. There actually isn't. Okay, so yeah, this would be the best option for the Claudii family. Put Marcus in power there. You know, he's our previous co-consul. Yeah, he probably would want a position. Uh, again, I don't think he's going to live very long. His health is, yeah, his health is garbage, so he won't be in that position for, for very long, guys. Uh, so let's go and get this last position filled. The Tribune of the Plebs. And we could do a member of the Fabii family. Yeah, I guess we'll do him. He's got good loyalty. Yeah, I think he would work out well. So we're going to put him in place. He does have a bit of corruption, though. Alright, so just wait and engage these guys here. And then that'll be... Well, we still got to wait for that siege, and then that'll be the end of the conflict. All right, so the battle's done. We only lost 102 troops of our own. They lost almost 2,000. Uh, so let's go in and attack these guys here, and then they'll take care of that. Though it'll probably, yeah, it's already gonna take care of itself. Uh, let's go and get these guys moving over to, uh, we'll just put them back home somewhere. Just get them out of here. We can enact an omen, so we're gonna do that. Our omen power is pretty high for the early game here. So we're getting some very good bonuses. Now, I don't know that we'll need the, the discipline for this war, obviously, but it would be helpful for the war against the Etruscans. So we're gonna go ahead and do the omen for Mars. Get that discipline for the next conflict. Because that'll be happening soon. Well, we'll just burn off, well, maybe it won't even wait to burn off the aggressive expansion. Maybe we'll just wait for the manpower to, to build up. Uh, destroyed those 2,000 with only 127 losses of our own. And just gonna take this last province here, and then we'll we'll take off, and then we'll just have to wait for that siege. We'll get them moving back home, and yeah, we're just waiting for the siege to finish up, which is almost there. Uh, shouldn't take much longer. Uh, we got a petition here. The wealthiest uh, residents of Cana, can you see him? <laughs> I probably mispronounced that. Uh, have sent a formal petition on behalf of the entire province, complaining about the harsh ways of their governor. It seems that his taxation policy is. Causing quite a, uh, fur, a fur, uh amongst landowners. That's something we haven't looked at yet, guys. We should probably do that. To look at the uh, the government uh, governor policies. Who are having to work their slaves to the bone in order to meet tax quotas? It's certainly unusual for our subjects to complain in such a manner. Perhaps we ought to consider their arguments carefully. So we can say nonsense. Lucius is doing a fine job. We'll gain a little bit of corruption if we did that. And Lucius would become more loyal. And the... Uh, local population is going to be a, a bit unhappy about that. You can see he's already gained corruption, of course. 
uh, from that, uh, from this event. We could send a representative to ensure rules are being followed. Uh, Lucius would lose a little bit of loyalty, and he would also lose some money, the money he potentially you know, stole from them or, or uh, overworked them on, uh, or overtaxed them on, it seems. Yeah, it's tax quotas here. So, yeah, they would be, uh, they'd get their money back, essentially. And... Yeah, that would just result in him losing that money and would become more popular. We can remove this miser instead. Is that what we want to do? I mean, he's okay. He's really not as good as he was at, at the time that we appointed him. I don't know if there's anybody who would be better for this position here. Uh, he would lose loyalty, but he's just a minor character. We would gain some tyranny. Yeah, uh, maybe we want to do this. Let's just take a look and see if uh, there's any better options here. Uh, there actually are. Uh, this guy, okay, he's he's better at the finesse, but his marshals lower. I think we had that guy available before, so that was always kind of a uh, choice for us. Yeah, I suppose he works out fine. There's really no, nobody who's technically better. Uh, so in that case, w we could just do this, and, and we'd reduce his loyalty a little bit. Yeah, I think that's the one we're going to do. Yeah, we'll do that one. Shouldn't have... Shouldn't have overtaxed him. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the, the policies. So there's a couple ways to do that, of course. You can look at it here. Uh, and look at the governor policy, you know, just through the, the province view. Uh, other option, though, would be here in our nation overview. We can look at the administration. Uh, so that's always an option uh, for doing it, too. And you can see what the, the current governor policy is for, for these areas here. Now, this does cost a bit of political influence to change. And, you know, I'm not actually uh, against staying on the uh, the Borderlands one, because technically we are on the Borderlands here. And it does increase that local fort defense, which, you know, this is the only fort we really have up here. So when we fight the Etruscans, that might be helpful, but really it's the mo local manpower. Uh, we kind of rely on this province here for a lot of our manpower, so it's probably a good one for now. We'll eventually want to, to change that from Rome uh, a bit later. Um, here, eh, I don't really know that's the... I mean, there's really... Probably not even worth changing here, honestly, because of the fact that it's just one province. So yeah, I don't think it's worth changing there. Um, over here, we got a lot more territory here. Uh, we're doing the acquisition of wealth right now. Um, you know what, guys? I think what we might end up doing here is trying to uh, convert them uh, with the cultural assimilation. Yeah, I think we're going to do that, guys. And we might do that in the other areas if they're not doing it already. Uh, currently, they're uh, allowing the local autonomy... It increases happiness a lot, but uh, yeah, probably not the one we want to do. I think we should try and, and get all these guys converted. We need more more pops here, uh, and we'll probably do that in all these areas, honestly. I know this is costing us a lot of political influence, but I think that's exactly what we're going to do with all of them. Uh, let me just see if we want to change these guys here. Not much territory here, but yeah, we're still going to do it. Uh, so yeah, let's just kind of foco focus on getting these guys converted to good Roman citizens. All right, so we've we've taken all the provinces down here, and so at this point we're, we're just waiting for that siege now, and then we'll be done with the conflict. We'll annex them, and we'll annex all this territory here. And I'm guessing this is over that one character who's who's irritated uh, because we still haven't given him a position in government. He's utterly tired of waiting for his promised role in government. I didn't promise him shit. Uh, Publius has been has been quietly uh, whispering in the ear of one of his closest confidants. And this is Olus Fabius, uh, has been wooed by the venomous words, and now both these traitors, curs, are spreading r rumors of our lack of integrity. We should have acted sooner. And so now they're going to lose some, some loyalty. I don't care. Uh, though that is the co-consul. We probably don't want to lose loyalty with him. I guess that's a bad, bad thing, but uh, it is what it is. We might have to deal with him. Uh, we're not facing any, any civil wars just yet. But yeah, we might end end up having to deal with these guys. We'll wait until the conflict's over, though, before we do anything. Let's just get this siege done. Get these guys annexed, deal with their families, all that kind of good stuff first. And then we'll figure out what we want to do. Uh, I would like to build another ship, but I'm kind of low on the money right now. Because uh, we, remember, we lost that one ship to those, those pirates, unfortunately. Uh, so this should be it right here as soon as the siege... Nope, uh, they're deserting, but we still haven't haven't completed it just yet. And uh, I don't know how I feel about the mechanic that doesn't let you, you know, disband your levies as long as you're at war. I mean, I'm not entirely sure why you have to keep them if you're not using them. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to tell your men to go home. Uh, so we have finished uh, sacking it, and we're just going to be gentle. Get that popularity boost. 
And with that, the, the conflict is done. So let's go ahead and sue for peace and get all these guys annexed. All right, so we have to pick what we want to do with these characters. Let's just see. Uh, we actually have a good Roman here. Oh, that's that's our people. Uh, so let's just see if there's anybody here that's that's decent from these uh, two countries. I mean, there's a, a couple okay characters. This guy's not too shabby. Yeah, his name is Marius too. Yeah, maybe we'll let uh, them stay, and then we'll get rid of uh, the other guys. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. All right, uh, so with these guys here, we'll go ahead and uh, pass judgment on the important families. I think that's the best way to do it with those guys. And then with these guys here, we'll just uh, tick down that aggressive expansion. All right, so with the great families here, I, I like uh, Marius here, uh, so we're, we're gonna wanna keep him. Uh, just looking at the other characters, this guy's okay. Uh, probably not gonna keep him though. Agrippa. So yeah, let's keep uh, Publius Marius. He's really good. And then with the the rest of the characters, because remember, we are losing popularity with which each one of these that we do. So I don't think we're going to keep this guy. I know he's, he's okay. Uh, but let's just have the rest crucified get a little bit of popularity. All right, excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of our uh, levies, disband those for a little bit, uh, get the, the military experience. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough here to... Uh, in order to get a tradition. And then, yeah, we'll just let the the manpower build up for a little bit. We're probably going to declare war pretty early here, guys. So we'll be doing both of these conflicts in the same episode. I would like to get these guys integrated. That'd be helpful. So, you know, what? we'll wait until that happens as well, though it looks like it's going to happen here in mere moments. And Marcus, our previous co-consul, did die. Remember, he did have uh, a position, his tribune, a uh, military tribune, so we'll have to get somebody appointed there. Uh, but he get a breakthrough here. Appius knows no bounds, and his role as research, he dictates that his capacity for further innovation has increased. We are sure to benefit from this. And so we're going to get one innovation just from this event here. And he also got some statesmanship, making him a bit better at his job. So that's uh, really helpful, man. Uh, just one free innovation. We will take it, and we're going to invest it in the military. So we can get uh, down here towards the legions a little bit quicker. Uh, so... We're not going to do that just yet. I don't know if we'll, we'll do it. Uh, of course, that only really affects the, the Great Wonder, so we're not going to do that yet, but maybe in the future. Um, but let's get this one. doesn't help us at all uh, until we get the legions, uh, but it does help us move closer towards getting those legions. Uh, so let's go to get the tri uh, military tribune appointed. Uh, so we could bring Publius Marius in uh, right away here, uh, just so they can look at the, the families. We have two families that we could appease uh, and make grateful if we uh, appointed a member from their family, and that's the Fabii and the Claudii. Uh, so both of those would, would be a wise choice, uh, but I kind of want to put Marius in place just because he has such a, uh, such a high rating here. Uh, so does Servius. He'd be a good option too, and he's a little bit more loyal as well. Uh, so that's a potential choice here. Uh, we have a Cornelii here, but yeah, we, we wouldn't get them appeased. Uh, we'd have to have one more appointee, so I think it'd make most sense to put one of these two guys in charge, and I, I feel like I'm just like trying to side with Mar Marius just because his name is Marius and this is the Marius patch, <laughs> but uh, cause, yeah, he just didn't have as much loyalty, so it'd make far more sense to instead appoint this guy here, so I think that's what we'll do. Yeah, we'll appoint Servius here because he's just better, and that loyalty is going to be... oops. I mean, do do that. Uh, that loyalty is going to be much higher once we uh, appoint him here. And so he's going to get us even more of that juicy political influence. Uh, so we are losing on the money right now. So we need to we probably should spend a little bit of time not paying for stuff so that we can uh, just earn a little bit more money here. And that's still going to result in a, a bit of a, a deficit despite the uh, fort maintenance and the fleet maintenance. I don't know if it's corruption hitting us hard here. Yeah, we are losing a lot of money. Oh, the new forts. I never did look at that as we've been conquering this territory, guys. So we need to take a look at that now. Because uh, I didn't uh, do anything about the three forts here. And then we have the uh, the forts over here as well. So yeah, we need to get all that taken care of. We're paying for a ton of forts. Uh, so that's my bad, guess. Uh, so we have integrated these guys. Uh, so now we can take a look at their family members and see if we want to bring any of them in. We have a lot of minor characters, though this guy is pretty damn good. He could fill a lot of roles for us. So I think we will bring him in. Uh, that would make a lot of sense. So yeah, let's bring him in. 
And then with the other two, we're just gonna go ahead and keep the popularity. All right, uh, so let's get rid of these damn forts, man. I didn't think about this, guys. We're paying for a ton of forts, and it's uh, quite costly for us. And now we have these two forts over here as well. And there's no forts down here, so that's kind of a problem. So we might want to build one once we have a little bit of money so they can't just you know push up here and take all of our stuff and kill all killing the slave all our damn pops yeah we can get rid of a ton of these forts let's go and get rid of that one there uh we can get rid of this one here it's a level two fort too so that would also save a lot of money there uh with the two here we should probably keep eh, we'll keep one of them i suppose probably not that one we'll keep uh this one here all right so that should reduce our our total uh financial costs with the the fortifications here uh also there's a fort here which is no longer really needed. At the time, it was probably pretty useful, but not needed anymore, so we're going to get rid of that. And so that should help our total economy quite a bit. Yeah, there we go. Let's get back up to uh, the positive here. Yeah, because we were losing. Losing quite a bit of money from these damn fortifications. Frankly, we don't even need the, the fortifications we have here. We could get rid of many of those as well, I suppose, if we wanted to earn even more money. So we'll, uh, we're back up to 150 here. Okay, excellent. So... With that, um, we might want to get a fort down here just to, to stop any uh, advancements this way. So the question is, where would we want to build the fort? If we, It doesn't really matter because wherever you build it, they wouldn't be able to, to go past it. Uh, could build it here since that's the capital. This place has a, a port though. I kind of want to build it right here. And so yeah, we can always move the capital. I think we will. Let's go and move the capital over to here. It does result in the, the province losing a little bit of loyalty. Uh, but it is helpful to make sure that it's protected by the, the fort here. Um, we got this one here is already the capital. These are not none of these. That's currently the capital there. We could always move those, but yeah, we'll, we'll mess with it later, guys. We don't need to piss off all our provinces at the same time. Uh, we still have this disloyal character here, which I don't care about this guy. Yeah, I really don't care. He can be mad and angry and upset if he wants. All right, so we're just, uh, Getting that manpower built back up. Let's just take a little bit of time. Uh, what we could be doing is working on uh, trying to annex. I, I want to say we only have two left, these guys. And I think these guys would be the easiest one, uh, considering the fact that we already have them pretty high. Uh, so let's go ahead and improve opinion with them. Cost a little bit of money there. And then we'll go ahead and do the other ones as well. Go ahead and uh, improve opinion with them too. Uh, we don't have any money. Didn't it just say we had 150? Did I spend it all already? I might have. Oh, probably on that fortification. Yep. All right, so we'll have to we'll have to wait until we get 25 gold here. Uh, and then we'll approve a penny with them. And then we'll just wait a little while uh, to, to get our treasury back up before we attack the Etruscans. This should be a nice big fight with them. Because, yeah, they've conquered all this territory up here. And then they have uh, the territory in Corsica as well. All right, so we're improving opinion with both of these uh, of our subjects, and once we get those guys up to 190, we can start the integration process on them. And so yeah, we're just kind of waiting. Uh, let's just go and speed it up a little bit. Now we don't want to to lose our current console, and that's in 465. So we want to attack them before 465, and we're just trying to build that manpower up. Obviously, aggressive expansion isn't even an issue right now. Yeah, it's no problem at all. Just want to make sure we have enough manpower for the conflict. Uh, a brighter mind Rome has never known. Gaius Junius possesses such superlative cognition that many of his peers simply cannot keep up with him. Uh, this is, of course, our consul. And he gains the trait intelligent. All right, so that's awesome. Uh, intelligent here will increase his finesse. And I think that now ties him with his, his co-consul. He'll get more statesmanship, uh, great wonder construction increased, and most importantly, as the ruler here, uh, the governor's loyalty is going to be increased, and we're going to get more research points. So that's really nice. Yeah, I like that. Uh, so yeah, we're using his finesse, and really the co-consul is just covering the zeal because, you know, Gaius here is not very good at that, that area. All right, so yeah, just get this manpower up a little bit higher, guys. Uh, the military experience, it's just going up so slow. And we might have had another event there that I missed. Um, so what is this one about? This is just going to increase some stability. All right, excellent. Yeah, stability's up there. 
61.19. Um, I don't think there's anything for us to do with that. We might just let it, you know, keep increasing. You get bonuses. You don't have to spend the, the stability. You get it up higher and you get bonuses for it. Uh, so, yeah, we might want to, to increase that because, yeah, I don't think we have any, any laws that I want to change to right now. Well, we do have access to the religious laws now, and we have not looked at those yet. Uh, so right now we're getting a plus 4% on the state religion happiness. Uh, this would increase omen power by plus 15%. And remember, we do have that uh, modifier that's making it cheaper to change laws. So that's helpful. Uh, that's because we got the civic advances up to level three. That's the reason why we have access to these now. Now you notice that we can change to here where we could result in uh, basically not having an election and just keeping uh, Gaius Junius as our, uh, you know, as our, our current consul. And we could do that for a long time if we wanted to. And he's a great character. Uh, if we wanted to do that, would make him the first citizen. Uh, other options is down here on these religious laws. We we're looking at these. Get the pop conversion seed uh, plus 20%. That's always helpful. Uh, divine sacrifice costs negative 33%. You no, know, I don't think the pop conversion speed is going to be needed at all. I think everybody's our religion for the most part. Yeah, 98.47% uh, of our population is our religion. So, yeah, that, that law really wouldn't be all that helpful to us, honestly. You know what? Let's just keep our stability and uh, just use the bonuses for that. Uh, you get some very nice bonuses there, like population happiness, population growth. But the research points is, is uh, probably the best part of the, the stability bonuses. And it's still going up as well. Uh, let's go ahead and move our our fleet. It does seem that we might have lost some, some ships. Yeah, they lost a ship. All right, so let's bring them back over here. Uh, I don't know how many ships our enemy has. He has 13, so if we want to be able to beat his fleet, we're going to have to build up our fleet just a little bit more. So let's go and do that. Uh, so let's go and build to the navy here, and we're going to build two of these bad boys. In fact, we might want to build a bit more. Yeah, maybe build, just make sure we outnumber them by a lot. Maybe get up to 18. Yeah, I think that's what we'll be doing. So this is 15, 16, 17, 18. There we go. So build the fleet up for this conflict. Let me just make sure we're not paying for it. Okay, excellent. And uh, there's going to be a few months. So, yeah, we're probably not going to be able to do the war until it's going to be kind of last minute here with the consul. Uh, so our tribal neighbor has started investing a lot of their treasury. All right, so uh, we're going to get some money, essentially, and uh, increased opinion. And we're going to get a local tax bonus, but the population is not going to be as happy because of the tribal influx. Okay, we do have temporarily had a disloyal character, but... He decided to change his mind. Uh, so I think this has to do with the agenda, which we never did take a look at what our new government's agenda is because the Popularis faction is actually in power right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, he's a member of the Popularis faction, and so is he. So they have both console positions. Uh, so yeah, they have a, a very good approval of us and just complete control right now. And so with that, their agenda is to pass that law. Okay, so just taking a look at which law that is. Yeah, we don't want that. Again, that's just completely useless. Uh, so that's what this is about here, and we can change to it for free. Um, but again, I don't think that's a good option. And so we're just, man, I hate when you get forced to do this, but uh, yeah, uh, we're going to have to do that. And then what we're going to do... Oh, I got a claim here, so we might get attacked. Uh, from Sicily here. Yeah, they, they conquered all this this territory here. So we could end up getting attacked from well We'll have to see what happens, especially if we're like distracted with this conflict uh, now They're not that powerful, you know, they're they're not uh, anywhere near the power that we have But yeah, they could definitely cause us problems if we were up in the north, you know distracted and and fighting uh, so Let's go in and deal with the the problem with our our government right now because we did just lose all that approval with the Popularis faction. So I'm gonna go in and grant them public land, uh, though this will take some of that manpower that we've been building up here, and we will get some other problems as well. All right, you know what? we're not gonna do that then. Uh, I didn't think about the fact that it took manpower. I was willing to spend some political influence, but not manpower, guys. Those other ones, they don't all take manpower. I think that's the only one that does require manpower. Uh, each one has its own penalties here. So like this one cost money. Uh, so our granaries are raided. We received word from the local officials of the province of Apulia that the several important provincial food stockpiles have been looted by malcontents owing to the contempt 
of the, for the government across the area. It seems they hope to make tensions worse by forcing hungry people to action. In any case, it will not be cheap to replace the stolen goods. Uh, so we can say we will just have to replace the stockpile, in which case Lucius will gain loyalty here. And that's our, our governor there. And it seems like his loyalty is not very high, so that would actually be pretty, pretty helpful. Would cost some money. And shortages will be eased, but not fixed. And the province will gain loyalty too. Overall, the province is not very loyal, so this is kind of a problem. Uh, we can say Lucius can cover the cost, in which case he'll lose even more loyalty. Uh, we can say the brigands will be caught and the grain returned. This will cost manpower and political influence and does not increase the loyalty of Lucius. Or we can do that one. I, I feel like we have to do this one. Spend a little bit of money here, guys. Yeah, I, I feel like we have to. Because our governor is not very loyal. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Increase his loyalty by a small amount. And manpower is just about where I want it at. Uh, money's not quite there, but should be all right. And all right, we lost our admiral here. Okay, so we need to appoint somebody else. And I'm gonna base this on the best commander and we'll just uh, fill in uh, the scoring family somewhere else, guys. And so we could put Publius Marius in charge, um, but you know what, I think we might end up doing this guy instead. We just got him. He's just a little bit more loyal. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at all of our positions and see if we can't kind of uh, change a few things up because cl clearly we're having some uh, a few issues here. Uh, so like the religious advances, there's definitely uh, better choices here. And let me just take a look at the, the, the families that we have and how satisfied they are. So the Fabii family, we could just point one more person here and they would be satisfied. Uh, obviously the, the, Corne the Cornelius family here. They are scorned, so we need to get somebody appointed there. And then the last, or I guess we have two families here, Decii, they're content. I just want to see the last one. And the Claudii family just need one more to get them really happy. So let's go ahead and change this up. I know that will irritate the Claudii family a little bit, uh, but he's just not as good. This guy's way better. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put him in place. And let's see what other uh, adjustments we might, might want to, to make. He's pretty good. And you're not going to get any better than that, so we'll keep him there. Same thing here. I assume we're not going to get much better. There are some options that are, are slightly better here. Yeah, they're they're a little bit better. So we could put like Quintus in charge here. Uh, so that would be an option. Uh, or Publius. He would work as well. These are all... Although he's the same rating. So this guy's slightly better. So you know what? Let's go ahead and put him in place. Because I really feel like this is some of the most important positions, honestly. And uh, we could put somebody in a family in charge here if we had anybody who's as good, but we don't, so we're just going to leave everything as is. Uh, let's go and take a look at our offices, see if we want to make any adjustments here. Uh, so, you know, this is not as important a position, but there are a lot of uh, changes we could do here. As far as what we've done with the families, we've gotten it where Claudii and Desi, all, all the families are only just barely content. Fabii is the one that we could we could appease here. Uh, so we'll keep them in place there. Uh, yeah, this guy's pretty good too. I don't see any reason to change there. We just put him in place. Yeah, this is fine as well. One thing we gotta consider is that statesmanship. If you're constantly changing out these characters, then you're you're losing the the statesmanship. You're putting people in place who don't know how to do their damn job. So yeah, I don't really think there's any any uh, changes we can make here, honestly. Yeah, uh, I think we're probably gonna leave everything as is. And we just won't have any content, or we'll have content families, but nobody who's really happy. All right, so we're just about ready for the war against the Etruscans, guys. We'll let it go like another month or two. And a good thing about waiting here is that we actually are able to get a military tradition. I was thinking military traditions were 100. Yeah, uh, I was thinking they are 100. At least they were when I was playing before, so unless they reduced it or if it's, or if it's different as Rome. Uh, but yeah, I had, to, I had to spend 100 to get the military traditions. Uh, so we currently have just two that are open up. Uh, the way the military traditions work is it's based off of uh, the cultures that are in your empire. Uh, and you can get these... I'm trying to find them here. Yeah, you can get these traditions that allow you to embrace uh, other other traditions from other cultures if you satisfy these requirements here. So you got to have enough of the integrated cultures. So like for instance, getting uh, this one here will allow us to get these these two up there and I want to say that this one has one as well but I might be wrong on that one it might just be the one yes we have the the Greek one here uh, so that'll allow us to get access to these two here 
And I, I think that's it. I think those are the only two that we can get from here. But then when you embrace these ones, they also allow you to then, uh, you know, unlock new ones. Uh, so you can eventually get them all unlocked, technically. Uh, I don't know if you could ever do that in a game, but technically you could. So we have two choices here. Uh, we can go down Roman traditions, or we can go down the tribe traditions. Uh, just looking at the, the bonuses here. So this is giving you the light infantry bonuses. Yeah, a lot of light infantry, light cab bonuses. Yeah, considering the fact we're going to focus on our, our legions and our and our tech right now, it's probably better to not get anything for light uh, infantry because I'm not going to use them. Uh, now this does give heavy cab a bonus. Of course, then we can go down that route as well. Hill combat bonus is nice. Increase omen powers and generals better, fort maintenance redu uh, reduction. I mean, there's good stuff here, for sure. But I think the better route is probably Roman traditions, and I think that's the route we're going to go, guys. So it doesn't make any sense to get the heavy infantry uh, offense uh, before we get the siege ability, I feel like. I know this would be helpful in the war, but man, I would love to get these sieges done quicker. And I think that's the route we're going to go. And, and we'll get the, the offense later. Yeah, because you know, the majority of these conflicts have been the sieges. Uh, so... Let's get that. Uh, that'll be helpful and uh, in this in this conflict. So I think we're ready. Yeah, uh, let's go and declare war. We might have some money troubles. Uh, it's a possibility. We'll just have to see if we can sack a, uh, a few cities here. Maybe we'll we'll get enough money to keep the war going. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and declare war on them. Uh, we have more ships than them. We have our ships currently done. What we could do is just tick up fleet maintenance for a second. And let it go for like a month just to get the morale up. And there we go. Just so we don't have to wait as long to be able to use the fleet. Yeah, that's what we'll do, guys. And let's declare war on these guys. Again, this is going to be a little bit more of a challenging conflict than the previous ones. Uh, as far as like which one we're going after, it doesn't really matter. But we'll, uh, we'll just take a look at where, where all these states are because I'm not entirely sure. Alright, so that one's... Probably the one we're going to want to go for. All right, so let's go and declare war uh, for that one. We'll bring in our two uh, subjects. They'll bring in their subject right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and declare that conflict and get the levies raised up. All right, excellent. So these uh, 2,000 are now rising up over here. Let's go and get them moving. Uh, we might want to come over here. I don't know if we'll be able to siege that province down or not, but we'll try. We'll try and get that siege. Uh, we have the 20,000 men here. Uh, and let me just make sure everything's being paid for. Yep, good to go. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and get these 20,000 men. What we want to do is engage their army. Uh, as far as the fortifications go, uh, there's forts here and here that need to be taken. I don't know if these guys will be enough to do it. No. All right, so we'll have to give them some men. And then we have a fortification right there as well. All right, so not a lot of fortifications. That's actually uh, really, really good news. Uh, we don't have to, to do these forts uh, attacks too much. And, and it kind of makes me wish that I'd gone for the other tradition in that case, since they don't really have very many fortifications. So we want to fight them. Um, but let's go ahead and split off a small army here, guys. Uh, to help out these guys. Uh, so let's give them like, uh, maybe, yeah, let's give them like 2,000 more men. And they'll come over here and see how the best way for them to, to meet up with them would be. Well, I'm going to go over this way, I suppose. Yeah, because I think they'll need help with that uh, siege. In fact, this might not even be enough. Yeah, I think we should do this just a little bit differently. Give them like another, another little bit of uh, infantry here. Uh, we could also give them... Yeah, we'll give them them as well. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so we'll bring these guys over here. Another 3,000 to kind of help out there. And then this army here is going to move up to the to the north and uh, see if we can't engage their army uh, so we can get them defeated in a battle. Uh, we do want to bring the fleet out, but we, should, we got to wait until we get that morale up. I don't know who's currently... Oh, they're right here. All right, so that's where they're at. That's where their uh, fleet of 13 ships are. All right, and they do have 2,000 men there. All right, so we're bringing these guys over here. These guys will meet them there. And it does look like they're about to attack us there. All right, so yeah, we might have to move into their territory. Let's go ahead and push forward up to... Let me see how we want to do this. We can just take the capital here, which is right there and is not fortified, to get control of this entire location. We'll keep the army together for now. Yeah, it looks like we should be able to fit under the supply limit here. 
we'll keep them together until we get there, uh, get them engaged, get their, their, uh, army destroyed. So these guys are fleeing now. They see our, our army coming. They don't want none of it. Uh, this will be the biggest, uh, war that we fought so far. We haven't really had any difficult, uh, conflicts just yet. All right, so we're going to meet up with these guys here, merge them all together. If we can, we might not be able to. Yeah, we can't because they're part of two different armies, two different levies, I should say. Not sure where they're going. Looks like we're going to have a battle here, and yeah, and, uh, we should be able to defeat them fairly easily. All right, so we did finish up the siege there. We've now sacked it. That will result in all those provinces flipping over to our control. And, uh, yeah, we'll get a little bit of money to help finance this, this conflict. Excellent. All right, so these are all flipping over to us. Uh, let's see how we want to do this next. Uh, we could go for this one here. I don't think there's forts over here either. So this is all just kind of letting us seize control of their territory pretty easily. And uh, I'm not having to chase down their army because I have no idea where their, their damn army is, honestly. Uh, there they are right there. All right, so let's go back then. We want to get these guys engaged. Uh, they're going to attack us right there. And I don't want to attack across the river. We're going to avoid that. All right, so we did have that battle uh, over here. They lost uh, 759. We lost 199. Uh, so they are going to retreat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just stay here and do this siege. Since that's one of the few fortifications that we are going to have to take. And then we'll have them come over here next. Or maybe here first. So we get control of this. And then come over here. Might be the better way to do that. All right, so yeah, they are attempting to go after that first. If we attack them here, they're going to flee. Okay, good, because I don't actually want to attack them there. Because uh, we don't want to get that river penalty, and it's terrible terrain, too. Hmm. Okay, let's see how we want to do this, because we want to trap them. And they can't go past the fort there. So are they locked? Let's see. We might want to wait until they're locked. Let me see. If we were to go to here, yeah, that's the quicker route. Okay, so we'll go this way then. All right, so now they're locked over to there. And we're going to see if we can't get them engaged before they leave. I'm going to try. No. All right, so that's unfortunate. We're going to have to chase them up this way now. Yeah, this is not exactly the way I want to do this, chasing them down. Yeah, because they're not catching them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not the way I wanted to do it. All right, so that's kind of a shame. These guys are retreating. I think they're going back to the other capital here. Got that siege uh, taking place. Did we get our fleet ready? We do. All right, so what we'll probably want to do, because I can't force their fleet to engage me, is to go ahead and help out with the uh, the siege in that case. Yeah, we'll bring the fleet over there to help out with the siege. We do want to keep them all together, though, because we don't want them to destroy our fleet if we split it. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a pain in the butt trying to catch these guys. Yeah, we might have to go over this way. Might have to split the army off, guys, and uh, send one over to do these sieges. Cause, yeah, we are just not uh, catching up to them. And they are going over there to do that siege. All right, so we don't want them to do that. I don't really want to attack them across the river, but at the same time, I don't want them to continue running here. How long would it take to get all the way over there? Uh, so we'll get there in the second. I think they'll have that done by then. And we'll have to take it again. It's not that big of a deal, but... You know, let's just attack across the river. Yeah, because they're just going to flee any damn way because they're cowards. Yeah, we might just split this off over here and let them take these uh, locations. Yeah, we're just going to have like a little small army roaming around. And maybe like 2,000 to just uh, take these locations here, guys. Because we're not doing anything. We're just chasing these guys. So yeah, let's just throw like... Uh, yeah, maybe 2,000. Just to, like, make sure that they don't get destroyed while we're bouncing around everywhere. And, hmm. We might actually be able to force a conflict with these guys. Now, who would get there first? So, they would get the terrain benefit. We are attacking in the hills and across a river. That's really not the most wisest way to do that. Right, they are locked. We're going to continue shadowing them, seeing if we can't catch them. Yeah, this is kind of key to get this this army destroyed here. They are locked to go in there, so I think, yeah, this would work out. Uh, we are, of course, we're fighting in farmland, so I'm not entirely sure why the, the terrain is to their benefit. Maybe it just says that all the time. Uh, yeah, because they're not going to get any terrain bonuses here. 
we're not crossing a river or anything. So yeah, this is this is gonna go well. Uh, we will be finding uh, all these guys here, uh, but we still outnumber them. And we'll probably have a better, much better commander and just much better bonuses overall. Uh, we could always bring these two thousand men over here as well. But yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about this battle, guys. We got this. So we'll do that. These guys will take care of that for us. We have that siege going as well. I'm not sure where that fleet went. Yeah, I don't know where their fleet is at. Um, so we did finish up that battle. Excellent. Uh, it's a nice, easy uh, uh, win there. And I suppose we're going to want to go after the, the one fort they have here. Uh, they just have that one fort there. They also have the two up here we'll have to take if we want to take over all their territory. But yeah, we'll just send like... I don't know how many men we'll have to, to do over here. Yeah, we'll have to send a, a good chunk of men over here to, to get that taken. Yeah, we'll have to send some troops over there because they do not have many many uh, dudes left. And I don't think they have any forts to... Well, they do. Yep, they have enough forts to stop us. So they'll move up to here and we won't be able to chase them down. Alright, so that's a shame. So we need to get that taken. Uh, these guys are taking care of all that for us. And these guys are just going to roam around and take all this, this area. I don't know if we'll be able to do it all in one war. Might just be easier to split it up and do it in two separate conflicts. Yeah, we'll probably have to do it that way, guys. So maybe just get like, I don't know, all this taken up here and just kind of leave them with a little patch here in the north. And they'll probably still have Corsica as well uh, for now. Uh, so yeah, that might be what we do in this conflict here. But yeah, going well so far, guys. It hasn't been all that challenging. Um, we didn't expect it to be challenging, but I thought it would be a little bit harder than our previous wars. So far, it's actually been easier. They don't really have a lot of troops. Yeah, they only have the 8,000 there. It's not very much. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.